Welcome to labminutes.com in a lab video series on Cisco ACI 6.0. This is Metha, your instructor for this video series. For a complete list of ACI videos, you can visit our website under Data Center section. There you can also sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. This is the third video series of our Cisco ACI 6.0 lab videos. It has been a long journey for me to say the least and probably for you as well. If you have been following the basic and the advanced video series, in those two series we covered extensively from the foundation of physical fabric and tenant logical configuration to the more advanced features like BMM integration, micro segmentation, and service graph. All in all, that was for you to build a single ACI fabric. But ACI architecture does not actually just stop there. ACI also supports a deployment of multiple fabric, whether they are at the same location, at another data center, or even a public cloud. So to complete our ACI 6.0 journey, we will be covering a topic of ACI multi fabric in this video series. And in this first video, we will give you an overview of fabric deployment options, how they are different, and in what situation you would pick one over the other. Without further ado, let's dive into it. All ACI deployment begins in a single pod, which is typically your pod number one. In a pod, you have a fabric domain that is made up of spine and leaf switches that are connected together. Everything in a pod share a common management control plane and fault domain and is managed by a cluster of APIC. A pod usually has all fabric components in a single physical location until an introduction of remote leaf in the ACI version 3.1, and that is when you can start having leaf switches located elsewhere across an IP network. And later after that, you can even have a leaf switch connected to another leaf in a multi-tier fashion. And these are everything that you see on the left-hand side of our diagram. So this part of our diagram represents a single pod deployment. And we compare this to a public cloud. An ACI pod has a similarity to an availability zone. So, so far, these are things that you already know from our previous video series. Now, let's say that you need to expand your ACI fabric and have another set of spine and leaf switches in a second location. Maybe you have some compute resources there that need connectivity or Maybe you just want to have some physical redundancy in case the primary location fails. Connecting all the spine and leaf switches the same way may not be feasible due to a large cabling requirements between the location. And to get around this for a while, there was a solution called stretch fabric where some of the leaves are only required to connect to the spines at the other site and still have everything operate under the same pod. So let's say this is your location number one, and this will be your location number two. Some of the leaf switches on the left-hand side will connect to the spine over here and vice versa. But at the same time, you don't need all the leaves to have that connection. So these will only be your required cabling. Right, this is called stretch fabric. Stretch fabric is now considered obsolete and has since been replaced with multipod that was introduced back in the ACI 2.0. With multipod, you provision a new pod at each subsequent location. So in this case, on this diagram, you will have pod number one over here, and then you have pod number two over here. Pods are then connected and communicate to each other over an interpod network or IPN via the spine switches. So we're talking about having a spine connected to an IPN. An IPN is typically a high-speed routed network that needs to meet certain requirements. From the control plane perspective, each pod runs local instance of ISIS and COOP. So we're talking about pod 1 having run ISS right here, and of course COOP that goes between the local leaf and the spine, and has the MPBGP eVPN connections to the other pod for endpoint learning. So we're talking about having the MPBGP eVPN connection like that. 